Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we are gonna be looking at this guy right here. This is the BQ Magician pre-assembled, all-in-one 3D Delta printer. Um, BQ contacted me on Facebook asking if I would be interested in reviewing this printer, and I'd never heard of BQ or the Magician, so I kind of took a look at some videos online and uh, along with the kind of the product information, and it looked extremely promising, and for the price tag of, of $199 being extremely budget-friendly, it almost seemed too good to be true. I had to get my hands on one. So um, this machine came in, I've had it now for a probably a month and a half or so, and I've gotten to kind of get my hands dirty with it and see how it works and how it functions and the print quality. So in this video, we're gonna look at what this thing has to offer and what my experience has been like after using it for the last um, month and a half to two months here. So again, kind of talking about some of the things that stood out to me was one, that it was pre-assembled. Um, that is always a plus. Two was that it is $199 to $220, somewhere in that range, depending on uh, where you buy it and if it's on sale or something like that, which is extremely budget friendly. Um, it's got an SD card slot with a little touch screen on the front. It's got a on and off power button on the back, which is really nice. Uh, it says online, I have not actually cracked open the top shell. It says it has a 32-bit board, uh, which again, I can't confirm that because I don't, I have not ripped this top shell open. Um, it's got auto bed leveling, which was another crazy feature to me. And the three fan, the three cooling fans was also something that was really interesting to me. Now I do want to say right away that this is just a PLA machine. It does not have a heated bed, uh, but I wouldn't let that necessarily be a deterrent. Um, whether that means you're kind of just adding this to your arsenal of already existing 3D printers or you're looking to get into 3D printing, uh, PLA is primarily what I print with even three years, three and a half to four years in, whatever it's been now of me 3D printing. So you can do a ton of stuff with PLA and this machine with the cooling fan and uh, everything that's not going on is very much so catered to be able to print PLA and print PLA well. So uh, I didn't have too much expectations really going into it because I've been extremely disappointed in the past with things that look good on paper and in actuality they just don't perform. Uh, but I was nonetheless excited to uh, at least give this thing a test run. So I unboxed the BQ Magician on a live stream um, and it came in a really cool looking cylinder box which I've never gotten a printer in. It was literally a cylinder box inside of a cylinder box and it had really nice branding and it was just packaged very well. Uh, you pop the lid off the top of the cylinder box and inside everything has got foam on the top and the bottom and the arms are like kind of packaged, saran wrapped if you will. Um, there was zip ties holding the belts in place so that way the arms wouldn't move around during shipping and there was also two envelopes inside here uh, containing some ex extra stuff. One of them had a uh, PSU which is an external little block that just plugs in which is really nice and convenient because it just unplugs. It's not stuck to the printer because I've got some printers where the power supply is wired to it and it's loose uh, but it doesn't disconnect easily. You'd have to like actually undo the power uh, lines or the mains. So. Uh, this is that was really nice to me. Uh, the other envelope came with a bunch of accessories. I don't even remember everything it came with, but it was basically a bunch of Allen keys, an extra nozzle, an extra um, one of the other little metal parts of the hot end. That I can't think of the name right now. Uh, it came with glue stick. It came with uh, some some plastic, some PLA, the spool right here. Um, it came with I think a couple other things too, but I was really impressed with the amount of little accessories and goodies that they threw in. I wasn't expecting that, uh, especially not at the price point uh, again that this printer was. After I unboxed it, I went ahead and powered it up and was greeted by this really nice LCD screen, which again is touch screen. Um, I wasn't sure if the printer bed was level uh, due to shipping and stuff like that, so I went ahead and leveled it, which did take a little bit of time. Um, the I'll have some more close-up video of this, but the little leveling probe actually plugs into this kind of loose cable right here, and then it sits on the nozzle, so you hit level on the screen, it goes down and probes a bunch of different points, and then you remove the auto level and, I mean, store it somewhere uh, in case you need to re-level, which you're not supposed to have to according to the instructions, and I haven't had to yet, but I would hold on to it just for safekeeping. And the reason why you don't have to re-level is because, or shouldn't have to, the bed doesn't have spring adjustment. It's literally stuck in place, so it should never really be moving at all. Uh, it took me a little bit, just a little bit of time to figure out again, like how to plug it in and where it was actually supposed to go, which was on the nozzle, but it was really pretty simple and I was kind of making it a lot more complicated than I think it needed to be. Um, so again, that went down and leveled and that was really, really simple. I popped off the probe, put it off to the side. After that, I kind of ran into a next little confusing thing. So the bed's got this little plasticky 
thing on it, which has kind of got, it, it, it adheres on one side, and it's got kind of a textured uh, other side to it. And so I wasn't sure whether this was just like a shipping cover to protect this, or whether you're actually supposed to print on this, but it turns out you are supposed to print on this. And I've never printed anything like it before. Um, it's kind of a little bit squishy, a little bit squishy. Um, and I was kind of concerned at first because yes, although things do stick, like PLA sticks very, very well to it. Um, I had one point where my nozzle dug into it and I actually burned a little bit of it. And so I was thinking to myself, like this is gonna be a pain in the butt and um, you know, I, I wasn't really too keen on it, but after looking into it, um, I've done probably 12 or so prints on it easily and the bed is still holding up really well. It still has got the adhesive and I found out that BQ actually sells these replacement beds for $4.99 or five bucks so you could stock up on, you know, a 10 pack of them that'll last you forever. Um, you also, I don't, I don't see why you would have to print on this. You should be able to, if you wanted to, put down like some kind of small build tack or if you can find a square glass or something like that and have the auto level level on that service, you should be able to really print on whatever you want. But I think for simplicity, and again, if you're someone that's new, this material works really, really well. Um, I think that it said it was some form of PVA. Uh, I may be mistaken, but regardless, it's, it does work very, 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 very well. And if it is PVA, that would make sense because PVA uh, does a really good job and is used commonly in uh, support material if you've got like a dual, dual nozzle or dual extruder setup. So uh, again, the bed did work very, very well. And the cool thing is because it's so flexible, your print's done, you flip it over and it pops right off very easily. You don't have to use a spatula at all. I have not used a spatula, although they included one uh, with this actual printer. So the build area on this is nothing huge. It is 100, um, 100 millimeters round by 150 millimeters tall, which again, nothing crazy. And uh, if I was kind of comparing it to another printer, it'd be probably something like the Monoprice Delta or um, some of the other machines like the Monoprice Mini. It's kind of got that similar form factor. You can still print a fair amount of stuff. I mean, this vase isn't all that small and I printed this uh, on here, which I think it was pretty close to max height. I might've been able to do like another half inch or so, but just to give you a general idea of you know what it looks like. Um, you could definitely go wider than this, but as far as the height, this is pretty much close to the cap. Uh, but it's great for, uh, I mean, a lot of small prints, or if you, again, just wanna dabble with it at that $199 price tag or 220, whatever it goes for in that range. Um, it's pretty solid. It's got a Bowden setup with some kind of a uh, Titan extruder, which again, I'll show you guys a close up on, but it's got like a Titan extruder, uh, which is a, it's like a clone Titan extruder, but it works, it works well nonetheless. Um, and again, that three cooling fan, it's got literally the trifecta of, of airflow is extremely impressive. And um, for PLA, um, in my experience, at least kind of the more the merrier uh, as far as airflow goes and I was really impressed considering that I have not done anything to this at all. There's no upgrades whatsoever that I've done to this printer and it was able to print some pretty solid uh, prints, which I have right here. I'll show you guys some. Um, sadly, I did print them in white, which I know white doesn't show up so well, all the details on camera, um, but I will do my best to kind of get some, maybe in the shade shots will be a little bit easier to see some of the details on them. Um, but, oops, but it, it did again, turn out really, really well. Um, and I was able to, this is actually like one of the first times I was able to use the um, the vase mode. I've never messed with it really, but I was like, ah, this is a Delta, I might as well. And so uh, vase mode turned out pretty well. Uh, I had a couple prints where the walls were not thick enough, like this guy um, and this guy kind of too, which you'll get close-ups on. But other than that, I mean, everything turned out great. The little um, Matter Hacker's fill turned out really nicely. This little low poly skull turned out amazingly too. I did a couple other prints, but one of my buddies uh, my buddy that I live with here, he was a huge fan of one, so he took it and I didn't get it back. And one of the other ones uh, in the last couple weeks, I was playing with it and I snapped, snapped a part off of it. So that was on me, not on the printer. So as far as software goes, um, it did include a memory card, which I think I have in here. Yeah, it's a two gig memory card, which had some test files on it, along with a uh, BQ Magician version of Cura, which worked extremely well. Um, it was really nice to just be able to install it very easily. I mean, it's got that same Cura interface that a lot of us are very familiar with. So drag in your file and it slices right up, pop it on the memory card. And again, due to having the touch screen, it's really easy to navigate and get a print going with that. Um, I think the average print speed I was doing on this was probably around 60-ish millimeters a second. So uh, nothing too crazy quick, but still okay speeds. And uh, again, for 
the price I was really happy with. I wasn't expecting this to be a speed demon. I was more just trying to see if I could truly get a small form footprint that was nice, that worked well. I haven't had very much luck with small form factor printers since like the Monoprice Mini. Um, that was a really great one. Uh, and then again, that little, the M3D that I reviewed last week was just a nightmare. So this was very much so a relief to get something like this in that actually was able to perform. So to kind of wrap it up again, my experience with this printer has been really, really pleasant from the initial unboxing experience with the cool little packaging it came with to all of the tools you need. And again, um, not all printers come with some PLA. They, some of them will just come with a tiny little strand, but this is a good amount of PLA. I don't know, it is, it's a quarter of a kilogram. So this is enough to definitely get you started and do some cool test prints. Um, not all of these were printed with this. I printed some with, I believe, the Matter Hackers Build White um, just because I had it in my spool rack. So that's kind of what I used. I did print this. I used this for a couple of the prints though. But again, it does come with that. And um, <clears throat> I really like this, if you can't tell. <laughs> I really do like this uh, BQ Magician Delta printer. Um, it's a really cool experience and with deltas typically there's a lot of initial calibration and stuff and there was again none with this guy at all so if there was something that i will say that i was not crazy crazy about was the noise factor um, it was a pretty loud printer um, much louder than a lot of my other machines kind of similar to that of the jg aurora a5 so that kind of sucked it was printing right beside my bed like the head of my bed so um, definitely not something you want to run in your bedroom close to your bed at nighttime uh, I do, again I didn't look at the 32-bit board inside but if it does have replaceable stepper driver uh, stepper drivers you might be able to throw in some like 2100s in there and which will make it a lot quieter um, or potentially even some dampeners if you wanted to open it up. But for me, uh, this printer I was not something I planned on doing a lot of modification to. I wanted to see how it performed out of the box and uh, it did a fantastic job. So uh, definitely give my thumbs up to this printer. If you're looking at a really, really budget friendly printer that you don't have to do any kind of modification to and this build area works and PLA is what you're looking for, I would highly recommend at least considering this printer. I will place links in the description down below so that way you can find out more and read up on your own. Uh, and if anybody else has any questions or uh, their experience experiences with this printer and they'd like to share it, please let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.